Hi everyone. So today I want to share with you four new to me watercolor brushes, all from Jackson's. So they um, are an online shop, art uh, supplies online shop, and they sell a huge range of things from paints to books and anything in between and I personally have been so happy since I have discovered them a couple of years ago because they deliver very quickly they deliver like I think worldwide I know they deliver to US for sure um, they really package their um, products really well so you end up um, receiving packages even sometimes shoved through your letterbox um, still in good condition because of how they package things so there are four different brushes here now to begin with I what I do if you're new to my channel is um, typically I love to draw faces and I love to draw flowers and anything in between there but pretty much watercolor illustrations combined with other mediums so um, Having said that, there's a specific size to the brushes that I go for. Something like this, a three quarter inch um, brush is, for, for me, it's considered a big brush. But I will explain why I wanted this brush. I typically work with brushes that are smaller, um, medium size to small. And I pretty much um, picked these which these two are quite small and this is I'd say it's a medium however I think it's the smallest in that range there might be a six this is an eight anyways we will go through all the numbers um, in detail but to begin with what I want to show you today is what these brushes do so first of all uh, we're going to look at this one which I already mentioned to you. This is the Icon brush and the bristles remind me very much on the quill uh, brushes from Jackson's and I haven't, uh, I mean, I can't see, it doesn't say Icon brush on their quill brushes. Okay, so um, I have now looked up on their website and this quill brush is in fact um, from their icon range so these two brushes have the same bristles and the bristles are um, sable and synthetic mix so you get um, a mix of the two which means they should hold enough water however not to be too soft uh, and have a bit more of a um, resistance and snap back a little bit better into shape because when you look at a uh, fully sable brush so this one here this is a Billy Shawl's um, Kalinsky brush what happens with a 100% um, sable brush is that they're very very soft so if you move them they generally kind of bend so if you would paint you can see it bends a little bit and um, squirrel brush is even softer so it would bend even more um, however with a brush like this they snap back to the right position so they never bend you can see just snaps right back so that's the difference uh, and that's why they sort of mixed the two um, types of fiber and, and hair. Okay, so let's start with um, this brush. And I'm going to show you that if you want to create a nice background, nice and quick, then this is a type of brush to go for so let's see i'm just going to move these up here okay so as you can see nice and juicy and the watercolor lays beautifully there is no 
no lines there, just kind of really smooth, beautiful wash. To achieve this with a round brush, it would be a little bit tricky because um, obviously the, the bristles here are flat and the way it distributes the watercolor is in a flat, wide range. With a round brush, so let's go for the quill brush. And actually, let's go for the big one. I'm going to go for the quill 2 brush, which I don't use, but I think because I'm comparing this 3 quarter inch brush for you, I will go for this big one. So here is the quill brush and first of all you can see how the water is distributed um, not so evenly. You can see that. I mean I could go and try to correct it but I will never can you see that? I get these sort of lines. I never could get such a beautiful flat wash. Um, so if you want to create a background um, and quick and fast and have it kind of all one color, then you can do that really easily with a flat brush and that's what they're for. There is not really much more you can do with a flat brush. You can play around with it and you can sort of do some stipples on the side and things, but it's not really designed for that. Okay, let's move on to the next um, brush. So this one is a pure sable brush and it's a Kalinsky brush, which means that um, it's um, going to have really top quality sable hair in there. I went for this flat small brush which is 1 8 it's called Pure Sable 1 and the series is 917. The previous series was 702 and the quill is 777 but like I said they're both from the Icon range. Now the design of this brush is, is very different. It's a glossy black and it's got a gold ferrule, so it makes it look quite special. Also, this is the most expensive uh, brush wrench from the three that I will be showing you today. And um, it looks great, it feels great. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead. Now, this brush I got for doing some detailing, however, um, kind of when I need to fill in a lip, for example, or something like that. So there isn't much you can do with this brush, but I will show you a couple of things. So for example, if I needed to fill in a lip, and I'm going to show you different sizes, like that and even go into a smaller size. I will also compare it next to a like a round small brush and we'll see what a difference it makes. So this is great for, I got it for like sort of finishing off uh, face makeup. It, it does remind me of a face brush. Um, the bristles aren't cut in a straight line, so you can actually do some dry brushing with this one. So, as you can see, it's sort of great for wiggling around this brush and getting your pigment quickly in, sort of like filling in areas really. Um, I would also show you what I can do in terms of how much width. So this is the width it can go to. It doesn't hold very much of water. It can quickly um, finish the water that it's holding. And also there's dry brushing at the end, which is quite pretty. So that's quite good. If I'm going to turn it now to the side, this is as thin as I could go so not very thin at all so it doesn't have a great range to it if I wanted to do little marks again this is what I would get and running out of water pretty fast um, hopefully you can see the bristles I'll try to show you the bristles up close right here 
and hopefully you can see that they're not cut in a straight line which means this dry brushing effect can be achieved quite easily okay let me try just to compare it with something I mean this is one eighth I mean this might not be comparable but there is a two zero Princeton brush which is a round and it's got the same um, hair length as this one but obviously being a round brush it's round and so it has smaller uh, less amount of bristles so anyways let's imagine I want to color this in so with this one it takes longer time to do that um, and also kind of holds more water I find so it bubbles up So that's that. In terms of um, the thickest line that I could get is like this. Thinnest. I can go thinner. Um, and let's see. It does hold more water. As you can see, I'm still going. And in terms of marks, there isn't really that much you can do just little ones so that is the difference between the brushes and if I wanted to do some glazing so let's say wanted to glaze a little bit I find that going around the edges is a lot easier with this brush than the round one the the round one you almost have to turn around to get the edges so if I draw like that it's a thicker line then I hit this end and I have to kind of go this way whereas with the flat brush it sort of covers everything that I need with less uh, movements that I need to put in with the wrist basically so that is the difference for you right there say I wanted to soften the edges a little um, I'm just going to, yeah, that's also, it's sort of, by wiggling the brush, you get it really quickly into this beautiful gradient right here. And let's try it with this brush. So this brush holds a bit too much water and it just pulls out the watercolor too much. You can see that. So the gradient was easier to create with this brush. Okay, so moving on to the next one. Let's look at the silver line brushes. And I've got two here. So these are um, the Tory hair. So Tory hair is supposed to be the best quality synthetic fiber that's um, currently available. And so they're quite sort of premium in their quality and they um, hold a beautiful shape. I also find that the silver line range has also a lot of interesting shapes to the brushes. And um, so let's have a look at these brushes. And obviously they are, because they're synthetic, fully synthetic hair, that, that means that they're vegan brushes. I'm going to look at this brush here, which is a cat's tongue. And cat's tongue means that um, it starts off as a flat brush and then goes into a tip. So as opposed to a true flat brush that is as wide at the end as it starts off, the cat's tongue has that kind of oval shape to it. So it starts from from um, wider and sort of finishes with a tip and if you turn it around it almost looks very fine so this brush is a lot of fun um, again I went for the size 4 and you can go for bigger sizes if you work on a bigger scale but it is fun for definitely doing florals and I will show you how easy and quick it is to work with this brush and how much fun it is to create um, florally kind of 
illustration even if you're not great at it so it really does help you first of all I'll show you the brushes range so we're going to start with the tip and then push down and lift and push down and lift I love doing this exercise so that's the range you get you get from a thin to a thick with one brush which obviously can't really do very often with with other brushes so that's the benefit of the brush uh, if I want to do just a thick line then that's the width of this brush and it does hold a good amount of water as you can see only started to dry brush right at the end and if I'm going to flip it to the other side this is the thickness of the line I can get which is reasonable I could go slightly thinner here if I really try hard and hardly press on it so this is the range that you can get just with one brush which is um, which is great okay so the next thing I want to show you is how you could do florals with this brush and really easily so basically all you need to do is just push and lift and then again push and lift and that creates a floral so even if you don't know how to do all you need to make sure is you are holding it and pushing down onto it and this is how easy it is really that's it um, it's also great for painting grasses so you could just sort of create something like this quite quickly and again because you're pushing at the bottom you get a little bit of a thicker if I show you the same with the brush that I used before to compare with the round what is that two zero so here is the difference and then but like I said obviously then you could if you wanted to you could go and create something like this with the same brush and that already looks like a succulent to me and we didn't even do that much sorry about the out of view And of course, you would not be able to create this with this brush because even if you try hard, you just don't get that in one go. You could obviously start coloring in into the shapes and do it like that, but not what we've done here just by pressing onto the brush. This is a completely different technique and it makes it very quick and very easy to create this uh, with the uh, um, cat's tongue so that is the fun bit about this brush now let's look at um, the last one which is this one now this one is pretty special I have been actually eyeing this type of a brush since I have heard something about the something about the rosemary uh, and co I think it's called um, if you heard of it it's sort of the same idea of having a triangle if you can see so if you look onto this brush right here let's see if it's full so I hope it's focusing yeah so you can see it's a triangle right here and that means what I've done is they basically 
um, left this, you can see how it's sort of like a needle almost comes to a really, really long point. And underneath it, if you turn it around, it looks like it's been shaved. So if I turn it around this way, you can see it sort of almost looks like a nib of a fountain pen. So it's been shaved into this area to provide the longest part here and the shortest part here, which means the color will be sitting here exactly like it does uh, on a nib of a fountain pen. And that means you can actually go from very wide uh, um, marks to very thin lines and it is incredible what this brush can do. This is size 8. I think the smallest one is size 6. So let's first of all start by... So what I would do is I wouldn't mix it. Um, it kind of has this brush has a front and a back. I would not go with my front um, into the paint. What I would do is turn it like a fountain pen and just load the watercolor, the pigment, kind of mop it up with the back of the fountain pen. And if I'm going to show it to you up close now, you'll see that this is where the paint is sitting. Doesn't it just look like a fountain pen? So now let's see what you can do. So first of all, let's uh, see the widest point you can make and how much water you can hold. So that's the widest. And then it also takes up a lot of moisture. It really is like a little sponge. Now let's see at the thinnest and it's literally like a hair hair thin lines that you can create and because it holds a good amount of water you can keep on going and going and going so that's pretty good now let's make sure the brush is nice and filled up and let's do what we did there by lifting and pressing and it's a completely different effect. You can see how when I'm pressing the watercolor comes out and then goes back into the brush. So the next thing I want to show you is that you can create these interesting shapes by putting the brush and sort of wiggling it down and lifting. So let's do it again putting it down and twiggle and lift. So it creates like a petal almost and wherever you're going to lift the brush it's going to leave that residue of watercolor which can create a rather interesting effect. So you can do that and then lift it. Do that and lift it. Um, so it is really, really fun. So if you wanted to, I don't know, create a very, very thin, thin line, you can absolutely do it. This is also great to turn around and create long kind of... See what happens here now. You're creating long lines, however, because you turn the brush around, the liquid comes out more, so you're creating these puddles. So you could play with it and kind of create these flowers, really. Again, pushing and lifting and pulling. So this um, is a fun brush for playing with distribution of the watercolor and it is a lot of fun. So that is it for today. I hope you found it useful. I'm really, really enjoying Jackson's uh, watercolor brushes. I like the fact that they have such a wide range and um, 
yeah so from falling in love with the first quill brush to now um widening my widening my collection it's um it's been a, a fun process because that obviously will then allow me to um widen a range of brush strokes in my illustrations and that is what i really like about these brushes is that you can kind of almost draw or learn to improve your drawings with these brushes so if you um not great at drawing with a pencil or a pen then try um kind of just with a brush you know find a brush that has a wide range of movements and um and you can give it a go that way i would really really highly recommend you try a cat's tongue um in sort of a smaller size like this if you like small illustrations so this is size four again or a bigger size um, if you're working on a bigger scale but yeah it's super fun to even just sit there and do these little up and down um, brush strokes it's um, great for drawing bamboo leaves I will definitely add another uh, slightly bigger size to my collection just for fun why not and um yeah succulents leaves florals just of any um any shape or form you can do them in terms of um um foliage flowers and plants and all of that so that is it i also wanted to show you now that it has dried you can see the difference here um the watercolor has indeed straightened out so you don't see any streaks this was with the quill brush too and this was with the flat brush however there is a difference of granulation this one seems to be smooth all over kind of uh water to pigment ratio however however here you can see more granulation in settling in the grooves of the paper and um, also the other thing i forgot to mention about this brush i have it on another piece of paper so you can see it here i've done this one is with a flat uh, with a round brush and this is with a flat look at the beautiful um dry brushing effect you can get with this flat brush that you cannot get with a round brush um also it's great for creating a background for a, like a abstract piece and all that sort of stuff so that is it for today i hope you enjoyed this video and it will help you to pick um another watercolor brush to add to your collection if you wish to do that and all the links will be below as always thanks for watching and see you soon